Welcome to episode 28 of the Career Breakthrough Series. I'm your host, Paul Ames, and guys, be sure to subscribe by hitting the button below or hitting the follow button to stay up to date with the newest episodes coming out to you each week. So, our guest today, many of us will know from the hit Channel 10 show, Shark Tank. She is none other than the Red Shark, Naomi Simpson. Naomi is the best-selling author of Live What You Love. She is also many other labels, like an entrepreneur, a speaker blogger, mother, and a passionate individual to name a few. Naomi's journey started in 2001 from just an idea and persistence, and she has since founded one of Australia's tech success stories, Red Balloon. Red Balloon is an online experience gift retailer, which she started with just $25,000 and a second-hand computer. From its humble home beginnings, Red Balloon, with its mantra, Give, Share, Live, has now served more than 3.5 million customers and supports more than 3,000 activity partners throughout Australia and New Zealand. Her company, Red Balloon, was also featured in BRW Magazine's Great Places to Work list five years in a row. Before founding Red Balloon, Naomi worked for large corporate businesses like IBM, Apple, KPMG and Ansett Airlines, all of which influenced her views on her workplace. She is a champion of great workplaces and her entrepreneurial energy focuses on ready.com, which is a leadership tool that drives the alignment of teams through recognition and reward. Along with her investments from Channel 10's Shark Tank, Naomi is a keen investor and supporter of the startup community. Naomi shares her incredible journey and some of her insights that have really helped her out in her career and in her business. So let's get started on our interview. Guys, welcome to another episode of the Career Breakthrough Series. I'm your host, Paul Ames, and on today's show, I'm so excited to have someone who's been such a massive influence to me in my career and my business. I'm talking about none other than Naomi Simpson. So Naomi is the founder of Red Balloon, which is Australia's biggest online gift experience site. She is also the founder of Ready, which is a tool which helps SMEs to create amazing workplace culture. And she's also the writer and author of two incredible books. And uh, one of those books, I have to say, Naomi, has helped me so much with uh, various areas of my life. So thank you so much for agreeing to be on the show. It's an honor to have you on. Thank you. My pleasure. So, Naomi, if if you could just start by giving my audience a bit of a background into who you are and basically what were some of your biggest career influences for you growing up? Growing up, my biggest influence was my mother and my mother's employer, Lindsay Cadamol. So uh, my mum, when I was a, a, a little tot, you know, at kindergarten, she uh, went off to work at Monash University in the maths department at, um, working on the first computer in Australia. Oh, wow. And so as a little girl, you know, watching my mum go off to work every day in her lovely suits and her gorgeous heels in the 19... I, I won't tell you which... Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, I was just really proud of her and she would bring home these computer printouts and things and I'd take them to school and, you know, I was really proud of my mum, like incredibly proud of my mum and my dad too. Uh, he's an engineer. He put himself through his um, studies at night school and ultimately he created his own business as well. So he was the small business guy uh, starting his own show and my mum had a corporate career uh, in, in, in computing. And uh, she uh, ended up working for a, a great Australian entrepreneur, Lindsay Cadamol, who she founded the business Aspect Computing. Uh, and my mum said to me when I was kind of at university age, she said, sweetheart, really, um, you know, if Lindsay can run a business, you can run a business. And it was, it was a very interesting thing to say. Lindsay's a very clever woman, uh, highly intelligent and incredibly articulate. It was lovely to have somebody who challenged me to greatness. You know, she, she basically said, that's who I see you as, and you could be that for others as well. Wow. So my, um, my mother and, and Lindsay Catamont. Lindsay does remember me as a young girl, and, of course, in our entrepreneurs community now, I bump into her from time to time, and we've both been involved with the Scale Investment uh, pro- Program. And uh, that's, you know, it's a, it's a start-up uh, investment program uh, primarily for female founders. And uh, so uh, we've both been involved there. She just, she just thinks it's hilarious and funny, so it's great. Wow, thanks so much for sharing that. That's brilliant. And um, yeah, just touching on your group, I absolutely love the new Facebook group you've got and you've started. So for anyone interested in, you know, taking their business to the next level or learning some amazing knowledge and uh, 
you know, experiences from Naomi, be sure to jump in. I'll put the link in that uh, in the show notes. So, yeah, thanks a lot, Naomi. So um, I'd just love to touch on, I absolutely love Red Balloon. I think it's an amazing site. So I'd love to touch on what was your, your driving force to want to start uh, Red Balloon? What, what really sparked the idea and the interest to start that? I'm fundamentally a crazy woman. <laughs> I thought that I was going to have a lifestyle and if I started my own business, I could play with my kids and I could work on my business at night and clearly I got that wrong. (laughs) (laughs) You know, seriously, I guess this is one of the reasons why I wrote the book Ready to Soar is because a lot of people start a business and and they kind of just bumble into it thinking, oh, I've got this great idea, it'll be amazing, everybody will like it just like me, people will spend their hard-earned cash on it. And it's so much more than that. You know, here I am 16 years into the journey uh, it's nothing like what I thought it was going to be. And, um, well, I shouldn't say that. It's just I never imagined it would be like this. Yeah, you know, definitely. going hand to mouth, not being able to pay myself for years and years, bringing on employees. So, you know, when people ask me what it was like, it's, in all truthfulness, it was a blur. It was literally just a blur. I was just doing stuff every single day that I thought would make a difference. Yeah. Um, it, I was not necessarily strategic. Uh, but I, I, I have um, clearly my background is in marketing, so I get marketing, I get consistency, and I get follow through. So um, brilliant! Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So just touching on that, what would you say were biggest some of the some of the biggest mental roadblocks or obstacles that you reckon you've had to work through, uh, whether that be in your career or starting up, you know, the multiple businesses? Mental. Did you say mental challenges? Yeah, mental roadblocks or like things that you've really struggled with uh, to push through and, you know, how, how you feel you've overcome them. Well, you know, I'm really pragmatic and my personal motto is if it's meant to be, it's up to me. Yep. And what that means is I take responsibility. Stuff happens in every business. It's, you know, I've had as many good days as bad ones. I think I've had more bad days than good ones. Yeah. But each day, each day is a new day. And each day I get to create that day and I know it's up to me. Um, I don't wait for anything. I'm not particularly patient. So, um, <laughs> you know, when you talk about um, mental, mental, uh, well, mental agility and mental resilience, uh, I, I also think that we all need to have somebody who's got our back, uh, making sure that we're supported. Uh, and and so I I feel very fortunate. I I surrounded myself with other entrepreneurs. That was through entrepreneurs organisation. But you know you have to turn over five million dollars to qualify. So it's not available to everybody. And it's one of the reasons why we created that join.name Simpson.com because we might just be able to answer one question for somebody and they're on their way. And yeah, exactly. I, you know, peer-to-peer support, it's basically all about peer-to-peer support, but in a very, um, you know, a very kind of safe environment. So I, I, I suggest I think the hardest thing is the loneliness of, of starting a business, that you really are alone and then you're the leader. And if you have a really bad day at work, like you lose, you know, maybe your biggest distributor or your biggest customer, and you go home and tell your family that their livelihood is at stake. Yeah. So good. So you really tend to bottle that stuff up. Definitely. And that's why I really think this the peer-to-peer and shared uh, experience is really, really important. And also the other thing is always ongoing education. Yeah, you know, definitely. Are, the hardest thing for us now is that we are completely bombarded with information, like, you know. For sure. zillions of blogs, like literally. Oh, yeah. And so discerning what is valuable and almost having somebody say, actually, this, this is good or um, giving it some independent view. Uh, in the same way as we always trust our friends, if they say, oh, you should buy this product, you know, it's the same with where do I spend my energy and what am I learning from? So you want to have that level of, um, I don't know, authority or something. So, and that's why, that's why I did that because I, I really think those startup years, you know, you need to have peers who get you and your family and friends. While they love and adore you, they do not get your world. No, definitely they're, not. They're only going to tell you what you want to hear. Exactly. Yep. Thanks so much for sharing. I couldn't agree with you more, Naomi. Um, so as I said, obviously your book's made such a big impact on my life. So I'd love to touch on, I know in your book, uh, Live What You Love, uh, you se- separate it into four separate sections and I love how you break down each area. So you put it into passion, persistence, positivity and purpose. 
I'd love yeah. for you to, obviously my, my uh, show is created for people to help them in their career, but also, you know, transition if they're wanting to get into a business. So what would you, I'd love you to break down a bit more of those sections into, you know, why you think those elements are so important to people and uh, helping them in their career or just find their, uh, something that they love to do. Um, well, so you want me to basically tell you books and nobody buys it? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, <laughs> oh, no, definitely. Just uh, just touching on a little bit. Um, oh, well, look, I guess... Um, look, what I'm... Also, obviously, being on Shark Tank, you know, we see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures, whether it's inside the tank or outside the tank. Yeah. And um, so... What I um, realise is that what am I really looking for? Obviously, I'm looking for business. Um, I'm looking for where are customers, how many customers, how do they find customers, who else is talking to those customers. So there's all of that sort of thing. Just, you know, doesn't make sense. But actually, I'm always looking for who is that person. And, um, and I wrote the Live What You Love book before we were on Shark Tank, but it's funny how that kind of is my theory about who are you and um so passion is an energy it's something that is innate with us it's it's something it it absolutely drives us it's our energy absolutely drives us the second thing is um is persistence oh that's my husband calling (laughs) (laughs) the The, the more the merrier (laughs) Um, the the other thing is about persistence and really sticking with it so it's one thing to start a business but if you're going to take investment you need to absolutely follow through Um, and even if it's in your career and what you want to do you know, you don't make managing director on the first day. No. Um, you need to work your way through an organisation and understand and have different experiences. I remember a young one joining Red Balloon and she would always ask me questions, whatever it was. She says, how do you know? And I said, because I've been in business for more than <laughs> days. And she goes, oh, my okay. You know, it's just what they call experience. So you need to have somebody who's prepared to put in the hard yards. And, you know, Malcolm Gladwell wrote a great book about that, and you know, in terms of 10,000 hours and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and mastery, you know, the, the whole world of mastery. So um, persistence is really important. The other thing is just being positive. As I said, I create every day. Every day is a new day. No matter what happened the last day, I have a friend who is a brain surgeon. Yep. And, and when I'm thinking the world is falling down, all I have to do is talk to her and she goes, let me tell you about my bad day. Yeah. All right. context. It's just business. You know, it's just money. Um, and so always keeping that in context and, um, you know, by nature as an entrepreneur, we see what is possible and the upside, not the negative. So then the, the, the last one is about purpose and the purpose comes from how you contribute to others, how you're making the world a better place. It is about contribution. Um, it's about um, the world will be better if I do this piece of work or I, I, I feel inspired when I've contributed to others. And people often confuse passion and purpose. You know, your passion might be playing chess, mm. but your purpose is to be a role model as the world's best chess player. Definitely. So they're, they're different in terms of, um, of, of, of those two words. Passion is personal, that's you. Uh, purpose is about contribution. That's perfect. I think, guys, go back and have a listen now to that. everybody's going to read my book because they just got the two last words. Oh, <laughs> guys, I'll uh, put the link to Naomi's amazing books. Make sure you jump on board because I, I highly recommend them. They're incredible books. So, yeah, definitely jump on board. So, uh, Naomi, I'd love to know, obviously, uh, I know with Ready, you touch on a lot of creating amazing workplace cultures for, for SME. So, I'd love to find out what your thoughts are on the way employment's heading or the way uh, people are going to head in the future for you know, potentially getting into amazing workplaces. How do, you, how do you see employment heading in the future? Well, you know, what my crystal ball says. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, mm. <laughs> You know, we're, lots of people are talking about artificial intelligence and disruption. What I do know is that those people who have strong commercial relationships will continue to do so. So if you look at the the disruption, it's happening in the area where businesses became completely transactional. 
Yeah. And um, or they're not providing us service that can't be got elsewhere. So it's the transactional piece that is being outsourced and, and done in different ways. So relationships is what protects business really from um, disruption. Um, and there's always going to be a place for boutique, for boutique kind of businesses. Who are you know? There's a beautiful book called Small uh, Small Giants, um, and I think even Seth Godin wrote a book called um, Small is the New Big. Yep. You know, I love being in small business. I love it. I love being agile. I love being able to listen to customers. I love being close to my employees, and that's why ultimately we launched Ready.com because I know that as a leader, if I look after my people's well-being they will look after the customer. Definitely. So Ready is a recognition platform and we just make it really easy for other small businesses to use uh, so that they too can get the insights about the sorts of way that people are working and make them feel really special for their contribution. Perfect. That's brilliant. Thank you for your insight. I appreciate that. So um, I'd just love to find out um, three to four, what would you say would be three to five actionable tips that my audience could gain, especially if somebody wanted to get into a business. And I know, like you said, you know, we come up with this bright idea and then think that everyone's going to purchase or everyone's going to flock to our business. So what would you say would be the best three to five actionable tips that you've received or you've had to learn and how they would help my audience? So... Dear audience, there's only one thing that you need to do if you want to start a business. If you've got a business idea and, it's re- and you think it's fabulous, don't tell your family or friends. Don't shop it around the internet. First thing you have to do is read my book, Ready to Soar. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love it. <laughs> you want to read the book because you say, tell me the you know, tips. There's 84,000 words on helping you work out if it's a good idea. Do you want funding? What about partners? Awesome. Uh, setting out a plan, how do you pitch it? And everybody is different. So, so I, you know, people pitch me all the, all, all the time. They go, tell me, is it going to work? And the worst thing I can do to that person in that moment is say, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Because it might or might not. And, um, and they'll go around going, Naomi, it's going to be great. So of course, it's going to be good. And I really think that that is not fair. They need to do the work. Exactly. Um, so the one thing is, what is the one thing that when you do it today, everything else becomes easier? And when you do that one thing and you work it out, um, then you will have a terrific and pr- productive approach to what you need to do. So you, instead of rushing to the urgent, you're working on the important and strategically building yourself rather than literally race around like a hairy ass, whatever. I think that's great advice too. And it's, it's true. People need to be told the truth, like that they need to put in the hard work. You can't just go and, you know, blow smoke up everyone, you know, and uh, yeah, that's, that's great advice. So Naomi, I've got a bit of a random question I like to ask all of my guests. It kind of throws a bit of a spanner in the works. It's um, something I've learned from my own business. Uh, so it's from Solution Focused Therapy, which is a style of counselling, and it's called the Miracle Question. So imagine if you went to sleep tonight and overnight a miracle had occurred. When you wake up the next day, anything you ever wanted to change or impact in the world was able to happen. There was no financial roadblocks and no obstacles holding you back. What would be the biggest impact you'd want to make on the world and why would it be so important to you? You know, a lot of people are living in fear and if I could disappear that fear, what would be possible? Yeah. I love so, it. Um, you know, I don't talk about world peace because most, most upset comes from people not being able to see another person's point of view. So fear is stopping individuals, it's stopping communities, it's stopping leadership, it's fear and fear of failure. I'm talking about just the fear that goes on. And if we were able to disappear fear and see the world of opportunity that's available to us uh, without any, who knows what would be impossible Wow, that's that's powerful, and I've I've never heard that answer on my show. I think that's amazing, and it's definitely something that's going to make such a massive change in the world and people's lives. So, thanks for sharing that. So, uh, Naomi, I'd love to touch on how you actually got onto Shark Tank. Like, what was the the process? Obviously, you've had these incredible businesses you've built up, and you're you know such an inspirational person. But how did you actually get onto Shark Tank? Did you pitch to them, or did they come to you? 
you assume I wanted to be there. <laughs> so um, none of us actually, because remember we were approached before it was in Australia and I'd never heard of it and I didn't know what it was and I literally got an email one day and said we're, uh, we're casting for Shark Tank. I didn't even know what it was. So I just asked one of my colleagues and I said, oh, they've asked me to be in Shark Tank. Do you know what it is? And she just said, yeah, you love it. <laughs> and I said, well, do I get wet? And she goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> I um, but one of the things that I, I'm really keen on is balanced voice in all media. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons I take to the stage regularly. I write books is about making sure that I represent and I'm a role model to other small business owners. And um, that. so when this opportunity came up, I, I literally was like, I'm too busy. I'm not going to do this. This is not just about being producing a TV show. This is about having a lot of small businesses in my life for my future. Definitely. I'm spending my own money and, oh, gosh, do I really want to do this? And I'm speaking to uh, um, Carol Schwartz, who's a, a wonderful, one of my great role models, and she's a great advocate for powerful voices of women in media and leadership. And I just said, oh, can you imagine they've asked me to be on a reality TV program? And really? <laughs> and, and she said, every day you go out there, uh, speaking to audiences, inspiring them to live their best life, and you would be so stingy as to not allow people who would never, ever get to see you or meet you, you would take that away from them by not being on TV. Wow. Oh, she might not have said it exactly like that. She might have just said, you're really stingy. <laughs> so I because she, she, uh, she just challenged me, and I guess... It doesn't matter who we are. We need people to challenge us. I said I was prepared to be a role model for others. I do that day in, day out. I'm happy to share what I've learned. It's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And um, and a Shark Tank gave me an opportunity to be on a much broader scale, and that's why I accepted to do it. But I was not going to be a token female. And um, I'm really proud to say that, you know, we have great balance. And what's good for us is Janine and I see the world differently. And so people go, oh, that'll be a girly pitch. Well, no. You know, we see the world differently. And in the US, they had Barbara on from the from the beginning, mm. um, but Laurie didn't come on until about season three as a guest. Oh, okay. And they never had Barbara and Laurie on at the same time. Oh, wow. And it wasn't until season five. And that, to me, is a really interesting insight because... Just because we're women doesn't mean that we actually view business the same way. Like you wouldn't expect exactly. Andrew Banks and Steve Baxter to have the same approach to business. So why would you assume that Janine and I do? Exactly. So by not having one token female, you're able to see, well, this is what balance looks like. For it's sure. a diverse voice and not all women think the same way. Exactly. So let's not put half of the population in the same boat. Exactly, and I, I think that's so true. I, I think it's brilliant. What was the question? Yeah, no, that, that was perfect. That was brilliant. I, I think that's so true, and that's such a valuable point that you've brought up. And uh, what would the show be without the famous red shark? You've got to have the red shark. Oh, on that, so. That's important. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so just moving on, Naomi, I'd love to know. Um, so all of us have always got a really positive trait, a really positive habit that's really helped us achieve success or to move forward in our life. But we've also got a really hindering habit that tends to hold us back to reaching that certain level of where we want to be. What would you say would be your biggest uh, positive trait or habit that you've got that's helped you achieve success? But also what would be one of your biggest hindering ones that you feel has held you back? Look, um, I'm not a good people manager, which people are surprised to hear. Um, and it's because I run at a million miles an hour and so often people can't keep up with me. I don't realise that people aren't keeping up with me. Yeah. So, um, I have no sense or understanding of that. And I, I'm not good at it. And, um, but what I am great at is making sure that there's incredible people around me who fill the gaps for my non strengths. And um, I ha have had wonderful people with me on my Rebelo journey, like Gemma Farsnage and Christy, uh, Christy Caddick now, she was Christy Buchanan, and Megan Bromley. I've had some incredible people with me on the journey, David Anderson now, um, and Andrea Culligan, just really, really good, strong uh, people who 
uh, my yin and their yang. Megan used to always say, she said, I'm the detail in your devil. And I said, <laughs> you know, I was always wanting to change the world. And she was like, well, we just need to do that one step at a time. So I, I, I still have incredible people around me. I'm very grateful for the people who can go for my journey. Um, and, yeah, but I, I'm a lousy manager, lousy. Yeah, I talked you loud. I laughed you loud for a start. It's um, it's funny you said that because um, I can relate to a previous episode. I interviewed a lady called Lib- Libby Gill, and she was the former VP of Sony Pictures, and uh, yeah, has gone on to an executive coaching company. And she actually said one of the biggest things she was shocked. She kept putting her hand up for roles and putting herself in the front of these roles. And uh, I think within you know, a couple of years, four, four or five years, she made VP of Sony. Um, and she said she felt like a fraud a lot of the time or had that imposter syndrome where, you know, she she knew that the, the people below her or her team were a lot smarter and a lot more knowledgeable and had, you know, more experience in these areas. But, you know, it's all part of that team. So that what you were just touching on then, having that valuable team surrounding you, I think that's such such great advice there. So in Ready to Soar, I talk about the imposter syndrome um, and I also talk about... Uh, success by comparison and it's a way to a slippery slide like don't compare look, don't compare yourself to Mark Zuckerberg is yep. one of a, out of a box Definitely. and it's just the way that it's going to be so um, you know comparison can be quite destructive um, as, as can that imposter syndrome but I don't I don't have that imposter sy- syndrome that's not what I mean I, I, I know I can count on myself to do the right thing, to say the right thing and be the right person for others. I know that. I can count on my values. I can count on my integrity. I never let myself down. If I put my word to something, I just do it. Yeah. And so that's that. But no, no, I just, I, just, I just am blind to this thing called empathy. I just don't have it. It's just not one of my strengths. Yeah. But I am deeply curious uh, and being curious, that would be my husband again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he wants to be on here with us somehow. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to wrap up soon. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> but um that's great Naomi I'm um, so I'll, I'll, I'll bring it to a wrap soon so uh I'd love to know just one of the the biggest bits of parting advice you'd love to share with my audience what do you think would be some of the biggest learnings that you've gained through your amazing journey and how would that benefit my audience what do you think they could take away from that you're so cute you're asking for that gold nugget that will just uh, change the world and I remember actually one of the toughest speaking gigs I ever had was when my son um, my son's school asked me to do the year 12 kind of uh, dinner thing and I just valedictory dinner I just was I just was like oh my goodness this is such a responsibility all these young people are looking for this nugget of gold to take off into the world um, and I, I just thought, well, what do we need in life? We need a wishbone. We need to have a dream and aspirations. We need a backbone for resilience. Yep. We also need a funny bone because if you're not having a laugh, really, what's the point? I agree. That's amazing. And, uh, yeah, definitely great advice there. Naomi, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you. As I said, you've been such an inspiration to me and keep up the amazing work that you're doing. Just to finalise, I'd love to know uh, where would the, be the best place for my audience to reach out with you? Obviously, I'll put the links to your incredible books, which I strongly recommend you guys get on board with. Uh, I've, I'm a first-hand testimonial to the amazing books that Naomi's got. So, uh, yeah, where would be the best places to get in contact with you, Naomi? As join.naomisimpson.com. Um, I really, with emails and everything, I, it's almost impossible for me to correspond that way. Um, and also, you see, if I'm answering one question by one question, then other people miss out on that. So it's much better that we do that in the community. Uh, and, and so the, the only way really to connect to me is join.naomisimpson.com. And you can also, when you're on a blog, you can buy books on the blog, you can um, all of that sort of thing on my naomisimpson.com. So once you get there, there'll be a bunch of other information and things to see and learn while you're there. Awesome. I'll post all those links below and guys, be sure to check it out. I mean, Naomi's community and there's some absolute gold, gold and uh, great advice in there and some amazing entrepreneurs in there too. So Naomi, I really appreciate your time. It was an absolute pleasure talking to you and uh, I love what you've shared with my audience. There's some really great takeaways there from them. So thank you again, Naomi. I really appreciate it.
No problem. See you later. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you've loved the content that Naomi shared in today's episode and you want to take your career or your business to the next level, be sure to check out Naomi's incredible books, Live What You Love and Ready to Soar. If you head to the link above, which is bit.ly forward slash live what you love, number one, that you can get an incredible offer there, which is Naomi's two books personally signed by her, which are going to really help you in your career or in your business. So be sure to check out the link above, again, which was bit.ly forward slash live what you love, number one. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Stay tuned next week for another incredible episode. I'll see you all then.